Hey guys, today I wanted to explain to you a bit how our new series is going to work and give you an introduction on how you can get your character in so you can make your story and prepare before the series hits because I know uh, quite a few of you already posted your characters out there on the intro or on the trailer teaser that I posted a couple of days ago. And uh, well, since the series is coming soon, this is going to hopefully prepare you with more information. So if you want to still edit your stories and prepare, this is going to be uh, the way to go. Now, as always, make sure to post your story, your backstory on the first episode of the series. That's how you get in. If it's there, it counts. You can post it on Discord so we can talk about it. You can post it on the trailer as you did. But the one that really counts, it's going to be the first episode of the series. Now, you already know you have to be either Greenlander or Scorchlander, male or female, doesn't matter. Because I've seen some of you post Hivers and such over there in the trailer, even though I said Greenlander or Scorchlander, so I'm just making sure that you know that so you can edit it right away. Now, the protagonist of the story, this is this this person over here, it's it's not it. This is this is just me uh, testing a lot of stuff on how this is going to work uh, and operate. Now, let me, let me just say, uh, the protagonist of the story is an invader from a foreign land, right? Our goal is to invade the Great Desert and get to Lord Tengu. That is the goal. Now, with some of the mods we're using, we cannot actually use assassination on Lord Tengu. Even with 100 assassination, you cannot assassinate him. So, you know, that's going to make our goals harder. We're going to be using stronger group combat and we're going to be using... A, uh, Universal Waste and Expansion, Kenshi Kai's, and all kinds of mods that are going to make stuff harder for us to do. So basically, we're going to have to invade. We're going to have to invade the capital. So uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. Now, as I said, we are from the Four Lands, or at least the protagonist is. You guys are not. Uh, he is the son of a lord. So he basically, he perceives everybody out here in the land of Kenshi as peasants, lesser basically. Now, just for the sake of RP, I'm going to be playing him as a bit of a dick. He's not going to be the nicest of people. He's basically openly racist to anyone that is not human. That's why there's only, you know, humans are allowed in here. And um, yeah, he's, he's going to be a dick to you sometimes as well, if you, you know, might not follow his rule exactly or all that. You know, we'll, we'll see how that's going to go. Uh, but basically what I want is RP friction in the comments. I want to see some betrayals and maybe some friction between people who really support him, people who are not quite sure about it, about him, people who might openly oppose him in time, you know, all that stuff. I want to see friction. That's, that's why we're doing this. But still, we have one common goal, get to Lord Tengu and take him out. Now... Everybody that joins at first will be considered peasant, as I said. And peasant is going to be one of the casts that we're going to have over here uh, for this series. But you can get promoted. And I'll tell you more about how you get promoted. It's not going to only be based on your combat skills, although that will, of course, play a part as you fight more and more. It's also going to... Uh, it's also going to depend on uh, the RP in the comments, you know. Uh, I'm going to definitely be looking at more and more on those comments and we're going to figure out how how it all can work out for the best or for the worst, you know. If you get promoted, you might also get demoted if your actions later on are going to, you know, not align with, uh, with our goals. We'll see how that, you know, goes uh, through time. Now... Since I said it's not going to be only based on combat skills, but everybody's going to start with same-ish combat skills because I do not want to recruit anybody that has like over, let's say, 10 in stats. So basically, vagrants and such, or maybe some of these uh, like rebel farmers, so th these ones are even stronger. But yeah, vagrants and such, we can, we can get them, uh, I don't know, knocked out in the desert and then recruited. That's how we're going to be getting our recruits because... You know, everybody, basically everybody in the Great Desert is hostile to us. If you look at the faction, we have a lot of, a lot of minus 100s over here. Anti-slavers, Crab Raiders, Dark Reavers, Dune Renegades, Grass Pirates, lots of people. You know, United Cities, Nobles, a lot of people hate us, our faction. So we're going to have to, we're going to have to see what we can do. But of course, our, our main objective is going to be the Great Desert, and maybe we're going to go down to the Hook where there's more uh, United Cities people, but 
starter is definitely going to be out here and it's going to be hard to get recruits because everybody will want to fight us. Now, as I said, everybody starts as a peasant, but being a peasant isn't all bad. It, it just, it kind of means that you'll have more menial tasks, of course, as a peasant will do, eventually whenever we get our base up. Uh, it's going to be important to get our base up because we're going to need to basically make everything ourselves, right? And peasants will have to work there, you know? But being a peasant also means that you might be a weaponsmith or an armorsmith. And you know how extremely important those people are. So don't be just like, hey, I want to be promoted because that's the best. No, we also need people who will make us armor, who will make us weapons. Sure, you might not be treated as a freaking lord, but you will be doing a very important job out here, you know. And as you can see, United States is our war zone. Like, extreme war zone. This is how our, our whole playthrough is going to be. It's just going to be war everywhere. Uh, I'm going to have... Let's see options up here max population squad sizes are going up as well there's extreme amounts of people out here and uh it, they're all enemies to us so it's gonna be it's gonna be very tough as we go we are probably gonna get enslaved a couple of times but hey it's fine now uh, back to saying that you know we need weaponsmiths we need armorsmiths we're gonna need cooks we're gonna need farmers we're gonna need crafters being a peasant isn't all bad you know it is not all bad, because especially we're going to need them, and the promotions are very, very limited. Now, of course, when the Lord calls, the peasants will also go to war. It doesn't mean they're just going to sit at home and craft. No, no, no. Everybody fights. Everybody will have to fight. That's that's how it is, you know? Uh, there is it's just, it's just that way. It's just that way. Now, for promotion... From a peasant, you can get promoted to three new castes. Into the 13, that is going to be 13 warriors. Into the 5, and into the 2. So, 13, 5, and 2. Those are the promotions. So, in total, that's like, what, 20 promotions that are available. 20 slots are available for promotion. The rest, stay peasants. That's just how it is. Now... We're going to do a lot of uh, like in-game testing and fighting and all of that before you will actually get fully promoted. So you will definitely have to show yourself being good at fighting, being good at, you know, stuff. And also, uh, as I said before, how RP in the comments goes. Now, as you get promoted, there's also some uh, gear choices over here. Now, this is the first uh, time that I'm telling you uh, for a series, you do not need to write your preferred weapon and armor because... We are an army. This is an official army that the Lord is going to lead. And official armies will have their official uniforms for each rank. Peasants will have some light armor. Maybe some like cloaks or like something like a wanderer stabbard or something like that. Not sure yet how it's going to work. And they're going to use pole arms. You know, classic peasants. We all know pole arms are great. So that's going to definitely help you in fights. Now, the 13 will wear medium armor. And they're going to be using crossbows as their main uh, weapons, plus long swords. Now, you know that most medium armor will lower your crossbow skills. So we're going to combine this in such a way, because I want these, the 13, to be like, maybe they get like a volley or two uh, of shots before they go into melee and then fight in melee. That, that is my goal. We're not going to have like a fully dedicated, a couple of snipers that just destroy everything and kite. No. You shoot, you shoot, then you get into a fight. That's how it's going to work. Now, the five are going to be heavy armored tanks. They're going to be used something like foreign sabers. They're going to be really heavy armor powerhouses that will go in there, will use taunt, and they will hold aggro for ages not going down. That is that is the goal, you know, them being like juggernauts or something like that. And the two, the two are going to be the left and the right hand of the Lord. They will have some prestige armor. I don't know what yet. Prestige armor, prestige weapons. We have new weapon dissemination mods, so we can get luxury weapons for them. Something like that. They will be important. They will be very important. And getting that rank, it's not going to be easy. We'll see how it's going to work in the long run. But I don't see anybody getting that rank for quite, quite some time. Now, not only does the rank give you better armor and weapons, as we set up our base... We're going to do the same as we did in the last series. I want to build you guys housing. Because it. I feel it's important. And when we have that, it 
it's gonna, you know, it's gonna give you, I don't know, some personality to the base. It's gonna make everybody want to strive to have something like their own home, you know, because it, it makes sense. Of course, being like almost, uh, or uh, ah, I can't speak, <laughs> being a uh, right or a left hand of the Lord, of course, gives you benefits of having like your own, maybe a luxurious house. Let's say maybe the five and the thirteen is gonna have like maybe maybe smaller housing, and then the peasants will either sleep in the barracks or maybe have some tiny tiny houses for themselves. Maybe those that really specialize in like crafting, maybe armor smiths and weapon smiths, and uh, maybe cooks will have like very specialized houses for themselves, you know. But otherwise, maybe sleep in the barracks uh, for the peasants. But yeah, so higher rank, it's also gonna give you that. So. You know, that's another thing to strive for if you want to. But of course, that can all be lost if you, if you maybe, you know, go the other way, betray the Lord. Which, again, I said, I want friction. I want to see stuff like that happen. We'll see how it goes. Now, let's finish this one up. Once again, remember, police. Humans only. It is Scorchlanders and Greenlanders. And make sure you post it on the first episode of the series as always, you know, that's, that's important, that's when, where it counts, now, you'll be picked basically on how good of a story you write, you know, I want to see good stories, and uh, it has to also fit the narrative, so you, if you're like, oh, I'm a godlike character, amazing skills, the best uh, weaponsmith, and I'm, uh, I'm a child, childhood friend of the, the dude, of the lord, <laughs> It's fine. Like, we've seen in The Legend of the Dark King some time ago that everybody, like, every second uh, second person that wanted to get in was like, oh, I was a second or I was a right hand of the uh, Dark King a thousand years ago and I've been waiting for him for this whole time. I, no, you don't, you don't really... You don't, you're not connected to him. You don't know him. He's new to this land. You guys are... Or all residents of this land, you know, you're gonna have to introduce this, introduce this land to him. You don't know him; he doesn't know you. That's how it is. Anyway, uh, also, a book length of a story doesn't mean it's good by default. You don't need to write like paragraphs of stuff. You know, keep it short. Short stories are great. You know, keep it short and then tell us more through daily updates. Or it doesn't even mean to be daily. Uh, you know, as the story progresses, we'll do this. This is the same as we did before. As the story progresses, I'll be looking at who still writes updates for the characters when I'm recruiting somebody. You know, it means to me that you're still watching, that you're still engaged with the story. So it makes sense, sense to recruit you, even if your first entry wasn't that amazing and somebody had much better entry, but that somebody never showed up again to another episode right? I would prefer to recruit you then, you know, because you it tells me you're still here, you're still watching. It's just, you know, it's a bit of a reward for that. Now, speaking of rewards, if you're a Patreon supporter, I promise I'll put your stories like on the top of the whole list. I'll look at them first, but being a Patreon supporter doesn't guarantee you will get in. It's just a bonus. I don't want to do any preferential treatment. It's just a bonus if you're there. Because that's, you know, not everybody can afford it and that's normal, it's reasonable, it's fine. It's just, as I said, a bonus. Now, once again, just wanted to mention, the promotions will not only be based on your combat prowess in the game, but very much on the RP and how you interact with the Lord and with each other. Especially with each other. I want to see how you interact with that and how, you know, interact with the whole world and all that stuff. Ah, okay, I, I've been speaking for almost 15 minutes now, talking bullshit. I I hope um, <laughs> I hope you like this video for the for what it was. This is just a prelude to the start. It's gonna start soon, I promise. It's gonna start very soon. But this just gives you a taste, and uh, hopefully, it, it you will you know you will know how to get your story in and how to make it uh, awesome and all that stuff. For now, thank you for watching. And I'll see you with some more Kenshi soon. Until then, just enjoy the RimWorld stuff that we have going on right now. If you don't like RimWorld, that's fine. On my second channel, there's like 80 plus episodes. 80 plus one hour long episodes of Kenshi. If you want to watch that, that's on my second channel. It's all from the stream content that I stream on Twitch almost every day. Uh, but 
they are YouTube bots, so you can you can watch them. 80 episodes of one hour long Genji stuff. You know, <laughs> there's frequent distractions in there, less storytelling, but it's still Kenshi. For now, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you.